I'm Ralph Ibendal. I run the energy transition business for Europe. I'm here with Ross Board, who is a director in the energy transition team, and Paul Betts, who is a managing director in our M&A team. Paul, looking forward, what do you think are the real enablers of storage into the future, and what needs to change? I think government intervention is, is key. I think there's a huge divergence in terms of what we've seen in the US versus Europe. In the US, obviously, you've got the Inflation Reduction Act, um, and on that basis, there are huge subsidiaries available. So $45 per kilowatt hour is available for, for battery manufacturers. Uh, and that's what's attracting a lot of companies to move to the US to set up um, manufacturing facilities there. Europe, on the other hand, I'd like to sort of compare it to the stick and carrot. So incentives, and there's a lot of encouragement in the US to bring capacity online. In, in, in Europe, however, the rules of origin act more like a stick, whereby companies that don't comply with the rules of origin um, by sourcing materials from within Europe are, are potentially subject to, to additional levies on the sale of their cars to end users. I think there needs to be a complete reform of legislation within Europe, um, and that needs to move in line with um, the US to make us more competitive. We've just seen Volkswagen announce that they are putting one of their battery plants on hold and they are focusing on, on developing that capacity in the US. And they estimate that they should receive around $10 billion in, in credits from the US government. So a huge amount of work that needs to be done. In the UK in particular, very disappointing to see um, how things have been so slow to develop. That was one of the primary reasons for the downfall of British Vault. And following on from that, we've seen um, both Tata and Jaguar come out um, asking the government to invest $500 million uh, into the UK uh, auto system. So it'll be interesting to see how the government reacts to that. But I think in order to attract more capital, there also needs to be more support from, from the UK and European governments to help crowd in capital from, from other um, sophisticated investors. Yeah. And what do you think that means for technologies, Paul? Do you think there will be a change in the technology mix available to autos manufacturers and storage players? I think on the te technology front, it's more a case of what is suitable for different types of vehicles, but also what did the commodity prices do in terms of the cost of the vehicle? So we've seen nickel prices, cobalt prices, lithium prices increase significantly over the last 24 months. The current structure is that those inflationary increases are passed on to the OEM and the OEM pass those on to the end user. But at some point, the car becomes unaffordable for the end user. And so one of two things need to happen. Either that margin squeeze that the OEMs are going to be subject to needs to be shared further up the value chain and everyone needs to take a bit of the pain. Or alternatively, there needs to be um, sharing of wealth across different technologies, different battery chemistries to effectively smooth out the demand for, for upstream commodities and hopefully in doing so put some ceiling on, on the cost of, of manufacturing uh, these different types of batteries and vehicles. This content is based on information available at the time it was recorded and is for informational purposes only. It is not an offer to buy or sell or a solicitation and no recommendations are implied. It is outside the scope of this communication to consider whether it is suitable for you and your financial objectives.